Hey guys, are you homeless, about to be homeless, preparing to be homeless, and thinking about, it's time to get out of the cities and I'm going to go live in the woods, uh, or I'm going to go live on trail, which is essentially living on the woods. And, you know, there are some things that you should really consider because when you go, come from a house to an unhoused situation, or you go from living in a city to living out in the woods, uh, there's a lot of changes that you're going to have to make and there's going to have to be things that you're going to have to be thoughtful about. And so that's what I'm going to go over in today's video. One of the things that you want to be thoughtful of or consider when going out to live in the woods uh, is your water source. Having clean drinking water and having good water is extremely important. What I want you to look at here is you can see the bubbles. You can see that it's uh, moving downstream. Okay. So stagnant water, water that does not move, uh, is water that is ripe in bacteria. Whether you have a good filter or a bad filter, you don't want to uh, put it to an extreme test. So what you're looking for is, as you can see how clear this water is, it is a tributary source into a larger body of water. The larger body of water generally has more contamination in it. And so uh, when you get into the tributaries, you have a lot uh, better chance of getting clean water that has not been contaminated. Now, a lot of people uh, really like to either use the bathroom near the water source or they like to go in the bathroom in the water source. Don't do that. That's drinking water. And the, the, if the quickest way to get sick is if people are urinating and, and taking a crap in the water. A uh, Giardia, which is something you're going to get if you're ever going to come out here. Giardia is something that you get uh, because there's feces in the water. Uh, it's, it's, you know, a lot of it comes from like, let's say cattle and livestock. Uh, or if, you know, you, that's why you got to pay attention to your water source and, you know, go a little bit upstream where it's cleaner and stuff like that. So if I didn't like this, as you can see here, there is, um, well, essentially a, not a waterfall, but a rapid. And so therefore I'm going to get close to that because that's where the water's moving the fastest, which means it's going to be the cleanest water that I can get. Um, because the bacteria does not have a chance to sit there and to grow. So um, when it comes to your water source, these are some things to really think about, okay? Uh, you're, uh, a lot of times, like Sam will go and get into the water and I will make her wait uh, because, you know, nature, it, it's, it's cleaning and filtering itself as it's going through. So as long as the body of water is moving, I'll let Sam get in the water, but I make her wait until I've gotten my water and all the supply that I need because I don't want to deal with her contaminants in my water supply as well. So if you have an animal, that is a second thing to consider with your water supply. But this is your drinking water. You do not want to contaminate it. And you want to be able to pass this information along to other homeless that you come across because if not, it will destroy all of our drinking water and it's going to be really ugly. So if you're planning on living in the woods, clean drinking water is your life source. And so therefore be thoughtful, look for tributaries to the main body of water, because that's where you're gonna get the cleanest and least, uh, least affected by uh, industrialization. Also, another thing to consider when going and living out in the woods is, are you going to have a companion, a pet, uh, or a, a tool, essentially is what Sam is for me. But you got to ask yourself, are you going to have, you know, what, what relationship with your animal are you going to have? And is it going to be sustainable? You know, one of the things that I always have to worry about with Sam, especially when we're on trail, is she likes to run off trail. And one time she's going to get lost. And when she gets lost, it's going to be kind of hard to find her unless I've got some sort of geo tracker on her. So what have I done? I, I train her while we're in the forest because the thing is, She's got a couple months to be able to, you know, get the idea of what it's like to, to be on trail. And she's picking it up pretty quickly. You know, she's got to stay on trail with me. She's got to stay within sight. Um, you know, I have little uh, 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 silent commands that I can give her so that, uh, because the last thing you want to do is be scaring away the wildlife or alerting people down the, down the trail that you're coming, um, if, especially if you're trying to remain stealth. So being able to get your, your animal uh, prepared to be able to move and operate quietly, 
uh, that means that it's going to have to stay close to you. Sam will walk behind me, things like that. There's all kinds of different things that you're gonna wanna teach your animal, but the most important things is to teach it to, uh, to walk behind you. Uh, that way you become the leader. And the other thing is, is like, is making sure that they understand when they can go get something and when they can't. So for example, you know, when we go to the water, I'll tell Sam to wait and then I'll go get my water and then I'll tell her she can go in. Um, or if I see that she's getting hot and overheated, but there's bad water there because it's stagnant and we can move a little bit further up and we'll find some water that's actually moving, which is, you know, safer for her. I could tell her to not get in the water and then as soon as we get to a place, I'll tell her to go down in the water. She'll immediately run in, jump in, and, and do all that good stuff, okay? So being able to have your dog follow your, uh, follow your lead at every step is extremely important if you're going to be uh, living in the woods or traveling as a, as a homeless individual. A couple more things to consider when living in the woods, being homeless, uh, is... Well, first of all, if you're going to be on trail, okay, keep moving. Don't stay in a place for more than 48 hours, okay? I know you get tired. You're just like, I don't want to move. I'm tired of moving, stuff like that. Um, but this is the lifestyle in which you chose. And so, therefore, when you decide to get lazy and, uh, and sit there and mope there for like a week or two weeks, what you do is you start piling up trash. And that trash has got to be carried out. And then on top of all of your gear that's got to come out with it as well. So you got to be thoughtful of the type of trash that you're, that you're going to create, uh, uh, especially when it comes to packaging, okay? Not, not, only, not only packaging, but again, you're going three days between towns, sometimes, sometimes five days between towns, uh, depending upon the speed in which you move. You know, so you think, think of it in this way. You're going to have to carry that trash around for a long period of time. Leaving your trash in the fire pit or burning plastic in a fire pit is something that that home bums do uh because they're, they're just they're home bums and and they're they're messed up okay uh it you cannot once you've burnt plastic you can no longer use that fire uh even if you come and build another fire later on you cannot use that to cook food on because of the plastic and the way in which it gets into your your food the fumes and stuff like that so when you do that, you completely destroy uh, a, a whole campsite for everybody. And quite frankly, if when people find out who's doing it, uh, whether they're homeless or uh, hikers, uh, there is going to be a price to pay. So don't think that you're going to be able to go and get away with it because when you destroy enough of the campsites because of your negligence and incompetence, um, people will start looking for you, especially if they know that you're within a specific area. Okay, so... Uh, you, you just you're just making life worse for you uh, by not you know kind of going with the uh, the code of conduct for the environment in which you're in okay so it's pack it in pack it out leave no trace always be moving um, don't you know cans and all that stuff you've got to learn how to use ziploc bags and other things to be able to package your food that way you have less trash to worry about so, for example, I've got a Ziploc bag for my, uh, for my creamer. I've got, a, I've got another bag that I use for my, uh, for my powdered milk. I've got another uh, Ziploc bag that I use for all of my, uh, all of my uh, granola bars. And instead of, like, putting it in a bag and stuff like that, I just, once I use the wrapper, I, I, I put it in, uh, neatly because, you know, the, there's still some stuff in, uh, on the liner. So I put it in there so it won't be so messy. And so therefore I just, I, I do that with my trash and it kind of helps me keep inventory as well. Okay, so if you're thinking about, uh, about living in the woods, um, it does come with certain responsibility. Now you do get, I mean, look at this view I got behind me. I'm in a, I'm in a park in a city right now um, because I'm in, uh, I'm in a city doing a resupply and I'm getting some replacement gear. So, I, I just found a wooded area, but it, once you start living this lifestyle, you're going to be naturally attracted and going and looking for the wooded area. So I think I may have found my place to sleep for the night, or at least in this general area. Uh, I kind of got to still do some stealth camping because I'm in a city park, but I'm next to a water. Um, I'm next to a, a, a waterfall. 
uh, I'm, I'm around trees, I'm in nature. It's a, it's a whole different lifestyle to begin with. And if you don't respect it, uh, then all you're doing is destroying it for everybody else. And uh, there will be, especially if I come across you, um, we will have we will have a conversation about this because you know it's embarrassing when you go into a campsite and you see all this trash left and a lot of the times it's done by houses uh but you know a lot of these houses are going to end up coming out here and living in the woods and then they're going to be trashing the woods and destroying the whole ecosystem you know and coming across trashed areas especially in a city it's like okay it's a city at least it's contained and it's already within a concrete jungle but out here, no, 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 no. So, all right, guys, you know how to help the channel. Uh, if you want to help me in my homelessness, it's, I've got subscriptions either on Patreon or YouTube, $3, $5 a month. Uh, uh, it all stacks up over time, okay? So this is my plan to get off the streets and end my homelessness. So if you'd like to contribute, look into one of my memberships. Uh, otherwise, I will see you either on my live streams or in the next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, all that good stuff.